This is where it begins. All right, friends, I got my got my figuring done here. And what we're gonna need to build these sawhorses, and what you're gonna need as well, is gonna be three four by fours. At eight feet came out to be the best use, easiest to work with, and uh, we can get everything we need out of it. So we're gonna cut, we'll cut eight foot. We need three four by fours at eight foot, and two six by sixes, or four by sixes, not six by sixes, two six four by sixes at eight foot. So that will do it. Okay, so just to, this is such a nice log, isn't it? These my, my plans are here. So, you know, we can see right here, this is a big old log here, no problem. Four inches, you know, if we come down here a little bit, you know, we're gonna be, you know, down there after our first cut. So let's say right here to be generous. Four inches, we've got, how many, how many can we get? Right here, we've got 10. We can get one, two, two, there's four, eight, can we get three? Possibly three. Get three four by fours, eight foot long across here, just off that top cut. It may be, if we can't quite make it, we can get a two by off of there, no problem. And then down here, we'll have, once we come down, let's say four inches here, right there are six bys. We can get, there's six, there's 12, or four, we can go deep, four, eight, 12. We can get, turn them, cut them this way, six, and then get our, like this, one, two, three, maybe four. We'll see how, how it goes there, but no problem. So what we'll do is we'll, we're, we'll, uh, we'll overcut this, we'll cut this eight foot, eight inches. Now the reason for that is we wanna, when we're cutting these, we, because we want eight footers, we don't want it to be exactly eight. Usually loggers and sawmills, they'll overcut between six and eight inches, so it gives you a little bit of extra to play with. It's really nice for timber framing because if you're doing joinery and you find that you have a little knot that's gonna be right where you're working, you have that six inches, eight inches, you can shift back and forth to get a little bit of variety, and it gives you plenty of room to square up the edges and just, just it's just a nice thing to do. So you may notice as we work with some of these, you might wonder why these are burnt. See all the char on this? These logs, actually, I bought these. Um, I have a friend who's a forester, and uh, he sold them to me. He gave me a really good price on them. Um, and they were harvested off of the mountain to the north, Mount Fuji to the north. This, I was actually on this wildland fire for over two weeks, putting it out where these logs ha have been charred. They're still perfectly sound. Um, they don't bring a premium because they, you know, they're kind of dirty and hard to work with because of all the char on there, but it's very surface and, and, and they were standing dead when they cut them. So they're, they're actually pretty dry. They're reaching the end of their shelf life here. Let me show you why. When you get trees down on the ground, you want to, if you're going to be using them for timbers, you want to, you know, you, it's nice to use them as soon as you can. I, you know, you, you want to use them probably within a year or so. Now these have been sitting down here, I don't know how long they were down before I bought them, but you know, it was pretty wet this winter and we're starting to see the, the mushrooms and the fungus. Here you can see some of the larger fungus there. That's gonna start breaking down the wood and it'll actually start getting punky and soft. Now having leaving the bark on them, some of the bark is still here, that will really expedite a rot and decay. So if you are going to have something down for a while and you plan on using it, you know, a year in advance or so, strip the bark off of it and they'll and get them up off the ground and they will hold better. Now before we cut, I want to really take a look at the log and see are there any major defects in it. You know, right down here where they're cut at the stump, oftentimes or at the bowl of the tree, you're going to have, it's going to be very wide, very fat. Now the old timers, you remember how you saw their, they would springboard, you see them standing on those little boards when they cut up really high? The reason why the huge fir, firs and cedars out here, uh, they're really fat, they can be, be like almost 50%, 60% thicker at the, at the very bottom, and so they would get up there high so they didn't have to cut through so much wood. It saved them a lot of work. But we're look, what we're looking for is we're looking for the perfect timber. The perfect timber is perfectly square, perfectly six by four, four by six, four by four, eight by eight, whatever you're cutting. And of course, you know, trees don't grow that way. And if you look at this and sight down it, you can see that indeed it's got a hook in it right there. Right there, you see that hook? 
And then of course that first stick, it's really nice up in there. But for what we're doing, that's okay. We're only gonna have an eight footer. Now, if we needed to cut a big beam, like a, let's say an eight by 12 or something out of this, you know, we might just go up there and, and lop that off right there at that hook and use that for firewood because that's going to be a problem we don't want we don't want that in there short short timbers like we're cutting not an issue so just kind of an idea you kind of look and see what you got there and you're looking for any major defects do you have any spike knots a spike knot is a knot that's coming up it's a limb that's growing up at a 45 degree angle that will get in there and weaken the wood so just kind of give it a once over and and look at everything but this is a nice log there aren't there aren't hardly any limbs in it it looks ugly now, but just wait. You won't believe it. So Nick Bailey from Bailey's Online, if you don't know the, that website, that's my favorite website. It's the it's like the uh, the Costco of logging supplies, uh, Bailey's.com. Um, uh, Nick, uh, he's um, his grandpa, I think his grandpa started the business. He delivered the sawmill up to me uh, and I he, had, he told me to get some cribbing ready. Uh, we, he was going to show me, do some cutting. They, they actually did a post and beam home, I think for his dad and they cut the entire package all out of, um, I think out of Sequoia Redwood, Cedar, uh, down in California. And so I built these kind of these elaborate this cribbing system with these chocks, these sliding chocks on that. It was a total fail. I, I didn't, I shouldn't have built it before. I didn't realize how the saw was going to work and all that. So having the saw, the, 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 or the mill brought out late in the fall, uh, I did a little bit of cutting, but I'm really kind of starting from scratch here. There's a lot for me to learn about how to using, use it. It just, the winter came and you know, and you know what happens and it was just not possible. So now I've got to build some sort of a cribbing system. So this is kind of the remnant of what I had left over. I'm going to try this, but, but Nick gave me um, these things right here. Can you see these? Let me bring you in closer. So these guys right here, these are, um, these are aluminum, I guess, what would you call them? Stops, chocks, I know they have a name, I can't think of it right now. But the reason why they're aluminum, well, first off, what they do. So when we get that big heavy log on here and we're running the blade through it, we have to be absolutely certain that it's not gonna move on us. If it moved or rolled, it could break the sawmill, it could bend the blade, it could break your leg. Uh, so it's got to be cribbed up and absolutely solid. And so what these are here, are the reason why they're made aluminum is they're designed to, to clamp over top of a two by four and then come together and then you clamp, you tighten them down. You can see right there how that works. You tighten them down and they press and squeeze against the two by four. And then uh, you shove those up tight against the log and then it can't move. Two in the front and two in the back. And the reason why they're aluminum is aluminum is a soft metal. It's softer than the than the hardened carbide tips on the saw blade. And if it does come in contact here, if you're really getting down to the last, the, the, the bitter end there of the log, you're not gonna damage your saw. These are kind of a sacrificial piece. It's best not to hit them at all. So this, uh, I haven't used them yet because I haven't had a, a, the ability to. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go cut two two by fours and I'm just going to, I'm gonna peg them on here with some wooden dowels right to the top of these here and try it out. And if that system works, then we can do something a little bit fancier. Uh, and the reason why I'm gonna dowel those in there with wood is I don't wanna have any steel in this. I don't wanna, I don't wanna run, run, run the risk of damaging the saw blade. And so we'll just pin those in there. So let me go up to the shop. I'll cut two six footers and we'll, um, we'll pin them on here. And I think that this is gonna be really slick. That way we can, we can slide them here and we can adjust them according to what size log we have. If we have a little one, we can bring them in and it'll hold securely or a great big one and lots, lots of room there to grow. I'm through the first one. I 
amazing these old Irwin bits. All right. So I'll break the, there's a little screw on the bottom, little auger screw that pulls the bit in. You break that connection and then uh, pull these out of here. This here is just a little piece of three quarter inch dowel. This is one of my favorite silky saws. This is a little saw that I, well I bought it for pruning. It's got, look at the, how fine the teeth are on it. And it locks back like a pocket knife. You do forestry, just have something like that in your pocket all the time. It's just, I can't tell you how handy that is. All right, so I want this to be three inches, right? So we don't want it to bottom, or don't want it to bottom out, then we'll have to cut it off. So I, I drilled a little bit over three inches. So that's my mark right there. We're going to want two of those. It's a neat saw. Okay, with that cut, where's our carpenter's axe here? That should be fit in there. Nice and tight. Oh, I didn't cut it. I didn't cut, didn't drill deep enough. That's okay, we can fix that here, no problem. When you have a, th three quarters is a pretty good size bit to drill by hand. You can get your body weight on it. It helps tremendously. There, we went. we went deep enough that time, didn't we? Those are awfully tight, I'll bet. Being from Australia, I'll bet we have the metric system to blame for that. Bless you, Land Yanmar. That tractor is a miracle from God, I'll tell you. Boy. Hydraulics. How many, how long have I been chainsaw milling and milling and not having any tractor and using winches and come alongs? And I mean, it's nice to know how to do it, but. Now answer me honestly, can life get any better than this? Beautiful snow-capped mountain to the north and a fresh saw log ready to go. <laughs> it's just as good as it gets, guys. It's just as good as it gets. Oh, that's, that's a way better than our old system there. That's an absolutely rock solid base. That's much better than what I had before, stuff shifting around. So I was at the, oh, can you see me here? So I was at the grocery store uh, picking up some things from Mrs. W the other day, and I ran into, or uh, uh, a gentleman came up to me. He's probably in his 50s or so. He was a specimen, man. He was, um, he was he was not a big guy. He was he was probably about the size of my granddad. He's like probably five eight or so, maybe five nine. He had the broadest square shoulders, 
and and hands he, he looked like he was carved out of wood so muscly and sinewy was he i said what i said you i, I knew i figured he was a logger i go you are yeah you work in the woods he's like yeah I'm a, he goes i'm a faller that surprised me his fallers that's usually a young man's game i said man you're you know, all due respect you're a little old to be a faller aren't you he's like yeah you know he goes i just muscle memory man muscle memory i'm just strong from you i've been doing it since i was a teenager I don't know how to do anything else and it was really a nice guy but we stood there and talked for probably half hour or so and we got to on the topic of sawmills and yeah, he knew what kind of where, where I lived and he's been logging all up around here he said you know I, my neighbor just gave me a, uh, a great big black walnut uh, tree it's down on the ground he wants he wants to get rid of it I haven't known what to do with it do you want it I said well absolutely I said, I'll tell you what I said if we can you can help me get it loaded up on my trailer. We'll bring it up here. I said, we'll, we'll slab it. We'll cut it into, into boards and I'll give you half of them. You know, that's kind of customary. You know, someone gives you some, some wood, you, you cut it and you keep half and they keep half. And that's pretty way, way it's done around here. Uh, so I hope that pans out. So he's going to get with me here in the next few weeks and we'll take the trailer down there. And uh, can you imagine a black, you know what that's worth? I, I was talking to <laughs> <laughs> this is a family channel. I, uh, I, I don't know how I, it's hard to tell this story, but I was talking to Joe Salatin. Um, I got, we, I've gotten kind of acquainted with him. We both were uh, keynote speakers for Mother Earth News Fair all last year, and and so we would speak, you know, speak on the main stage and you know, kind of get to know each other. Got to know each other a little bit. But we were talking about sawmilling, and I was telling him about the Lucas Mill, and he's got a wood miser, all that. And so he's currently he's been so, uh, when I was talking to him, he had been sawmilling black walnut on their property. He's, he, he started talking about that black walnut and rubbing his hands together. And he goes, I can't tell you. I can't. I mean, I don't have the words. It's when you see that black walnut, those big eight quarter boards cribbed up there. He goes, you just you just look at it, it's like looking at cocaine. <laughs> it's, it's, so, it's so valuable. <laughs> I, I laughed so hard. I mean, you had to see the sparkle in his eye and, and how, you know, I mean, he, it was, it was, he was really excited about that. And I, I'll never forget that. It was a fun, he's the funniest guy. Um, just a brilliant guy. But we, I might have my own stack of black walnut up here pretty soon. So we'll see about that. All right. I think it's probably all we, time we have, all the time we have for today. Um, we'll just have to pick this up next time. I'll see you guys on the next video.